Hey, what's going on, New Life Church? Bronson Duke here. Uh, sorry I'm whispering a little bit. I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> I had some voice issues this week and didn't get to get it done in time, but I'm getting it done today. And so we're going to be in Acts 20, and I want you to look. Uh, we're going to look at the whole chapter. Uh, we're going to focus in on verse 22, but what I want you to notice is um, th- there's a few kind of movements happening here, and I wish we could hit it all. But one is the story of the boy who fell out of the window and died. <laughs> What I want to actually focus on is, I, I just think it's a cool bit of information, which this is this is the first recorded instance we have of the believers gathering on Sunday, because for the Jewish people, they would have gathered on Sabbath, which would have been Saturday, Friday uh, evening at sundown until Saturday night. But at this, we see believers gathering on the Lord's Day, which is cool. What I really want to focus on is in verse 22, um, it says, and now I'm bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except the Holy Spirit tells me uh, in city after city, that jail and suffering. Fly ahead. Sorry, city made Siri come on. Uh, jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. And so, one thing, what I, what I want to point out is pretty obvious which is that um, a lot of times when we look at our Christian life, we think about things like, this is gonna be hard, or this is going wrong, certainly the Lord's not in it. But what we can see so clearly in Paul's life and all throughout Acts, is that the Holy Spirit often leads them into difficult but powerful situations. And so our goal is not a life of ease, but a life of power. And I heard a pastor this morning talk about spiritual potency. And I think that one of the things that brings us spiritual potency, which is the goal, is being people who aren't ease-driven, but assignment-driven. And it's so clear that Paul here is focused on his assignment from the Lord. Whether he goes to jail and suffers, or he has success or whatever, he's focused on his assignment. And so here's what I want to ask you. In your relationship with God, what has God assigned you to? A lot of times we talk about seasons, right? Like, oh, I'm in a season, which really means I hate what's happening in my life. But one of the things that I've found helps me enjoy difficult seasons is knowing my assignment. And so what's God gifted you with? What's God called you to? And are you doing that thing? And if you're not doing it, how can you start? And so I want to ask you two questions. Is there anything in this that God might be speaking to you or stirring on? And if he is, what are you going to do about it? And so what I want to encourage you to do is look into the scripture, look deeply, take some time and just sit in silence and pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak, put away the distractions and listen and just go into a mode. Maybe this morning or today or this evening, whenever you read this, you're not going to get it. But just asking God, what is my assignment for this season? And having the courage and the ability to do it. Help me. I love you guys and praying for, for you to accomplish all that God has set out for you.